Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about the TurboSmart eBoost Street Boost Controller, how to set it up, what functionality it has, and how to dial it in for your car. Stay tuned. In this car, we actually have a electronic boost controller. This is the TurboSmart eBoost, and I'll show you how to set this up because this is a pretty trick little controller that you can actually make adjustments on the fly from inside the car. So we have it mounted here underneath the center console, and we just have this display, and you can see right now it is actually reading negative 17, which if you're not really uh, used to seeing any kind of a gauge in your car, that's actually in reference to inches of mercury. And I'll show you a little bit more about the scaling in a second here, but basically there's some pretty simple functionalities that we're gonna take advantage of with this boost controller. And we actually won't cover everything because this boost controller has a lot more features than we would typically utilize or need to utilize with a stage one turbo kit. Feel free to play around with it if you'd like, but I'm just gonna cover the basics. So off the bat, we, this is the main display that normally happens whenever you're driving the car. If I twist the knob, there's a few other displays that will pop up. You can see SP1 and then a value of 20. And then you'll also see a pH 6 or pHG, I guess, really, uh, for 8.1. So let's talk about the SP1. So this is set point one. And essentially, this is the default value that it comes with from TurboSmart. Most often, you won't need to mess with this much, if at all. But set point one is the duty cycle of the boost controller solenoid. So don't think of it in terms of 20 PSI or 20 units of boost. It's not like that. Think of the duty cycle for just a arbitrary number for us to be able to make adjustments up or down to control the boost pressure. So right now it's set at 20. We'll talk about that a little bit more in just a second. So the PHB, this is the peak boost or peak hold boost. So this means that as of right now driving around, we have seen a maximum of 8.1 PSI. And you can change this to other units as well. Again, we'll cover that in a second, but this is a good way to see just which or how much boost you've been running at any given drive cycle. And this is all just by turning the knob from what is essentially the main display. Now, if you wanna get into actual options, you press and hold the dial for three seconds. And now it gives us another menu that's got even more options. So this is BG1 or boost group one. So you have a BG1, you also have a BG2. Now, this would be something if you wanted to have a boost setting level one for what your normal driving is. So you might have it set to where you're at maximum boost for this particular application, and then a boost group two. So you might consider this as a valet mode or maybe for uh, a new learner driver that you're sharing the car with, you can turn the boost down, vice versa. Basically, there's two separate options that you can split the tuning for each boost group. Uh, the OBS is not something that is utilized in this particular car because it's an overboost safety mode. Um, you can hook it up and you can utilize it, but it's not necessary for our base maps or our, our tuning maps. We actually have a boost cut mode that actually closes the throttle plate. So it's actually even safer than the built-in overboost protection that's in this TurboSmart unit. So the CYL or cylinder, this is actually cylinder RPM. Um, there is an option to hook these up to be able to read engine RPM as well. We didn't bother with it on this car because the functionality for this is for setting up additional sensors or additional outputs off this unit, which is not necessary for most applications. You can do some pretty trick with it, uh, trick stuff with it, but we won't cover that in this video. SCL, so this is scale. This is where if I wanted to change it from PSI to KPA, or even bar, you can make that adjustment here. I'm gonna leave it in PSI. DNN, or actually it's supposed to be for dim, so like the two ends together make an M. It's an interesting choice. It's just for dimming the light. So you can turn this up 
maximum value of six and lowest of zero. So if you want it to be brighter or dimmer, you can adjust that easily here. Switch logic or SL. Um, this is a kind of an automated feature to be able to switch between boost group one and boost group two. Um, this is another fancy thing that you have access to. We're not gonna worry about it in this particular tutorial, but feel free to play with this one if you'd like. COR is for boost correction. So this is another one that you need to have the engine RPM um, wire that's with this unit, but we haven't connected it actually hooked up to be able to utilize this feature. It's another one that's pretty handy um, if you really want to dial in your boost and have it as rock solid as possible, but it is not necessary. Um, it does take a little bit of dialing in to do, and it is recommended to do it on a dyno to get it just right. This is PIN or security pin. So you can actually lock the Turbo Smart Boost controller and assign it a three digit password that will lock many of the menus out so that way not everybody can access it. Um, we don't use this very much. I, actually, I don't think any of our cars have ever used this, but if you want to lock it, you certainly can. RL, so this is for the RPM shift light. Again, you need to have a taco sensor signal or some kind of an electronic sensor signal sent to the turbo smart unit to be able to have engine rpm connected we do not so we won't bother with this one but you certainly can if you would like to it's another pretty cool feature for race cars and sol this is for solenoid cycle so this is a good troubleshooting device or setting that if you have it set to sol and then you press the middle button then it'll actually cycle the solenoid four times. You can hear it click, 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 click four times. And with the engine off, it's much easier to hear, of course. But if you don't know if your solenoid is working properly, you can use this to test it. And this is the ZER or zero display. Uh, you don't typically use this, but basically if you run the car at high temperatures or really high elevation or something like that, you may want to zero the device out. More information about this in the instructions that come with the unit from TurboSmart, but suffice it to say, most people don't need to mess with this. And lastly, RES, or factory reset. So if you want to turn everything back to factory settings, come here, press the button, and bada bing, you've got it back to factory. And then on the end of every menu, there will be an END, so this way, basically, if you have it set to END and then you press the button, it'll take you back to the main menu or at least the menu before that. So now you can see we're back to the main display. So that's an overview of the main options you can get with this unit. What we're interested in is if I go to the first menu with boost group one, I'm gonna press to select it, where I can now adjust SP1 or set point one, GP1, where GP1 is gate pressure, and then SN1, which is sensitivity. So these are the three most common ones. If you're just looking to set up the unit to be able to run whatever boost pressure you're aiming for, these are the ones that you want to adjust first. All the other ones, in our opinion, are optional and you don't need them. But this is the meat and potatoes of what you'll be using this unit to do. So SP1 set point. SP1 or set point is the way that you will adjust the boost controller to be able to turn the boost up if you need to. So the default value is 20. And we recommend that when you go do any kind of data logging or testing, just leave it at 20, go run it up and see what your boost value is before you mess with SP1. Now, turning the knob up two or five or whatever is not gonna mean that you're turning the boost pressure up by two or five PSI. That number does not correlate to boost directly. It is a percentage of duty cycle, so you're telling the solenoid to work more or less, essentially. And it's just a percentage of how much on time there is for the solenoid. So 20 means 20% 20 of when that solenoid is activating. Now, 20 is fine for this car, we found, so I'm not going to mess with it. But if you do turn it up or down, I recommend starting with single digit numbers, you know, probably like 
two, three, maybe five if you're really low on boost pressure, like maybe you live at very high elevation. So start with single digit numbers and take it a step at a time. Go drive the car, do your data log, and then check. And if you need to keep turning it up, of course you can do that there. GP1 or the gate pressure setting will tell the solenoid how or when to come on and it will affect that curve for boost pressure. What I mean by that is that your boost pressure normally builds and then hits a peak value that you want to maintain. But that ramp up can be kind of severe or it can be kind of gentle or it can be a quick jump up to that boost pressure as quick as you can to maintain boost as long as you can for that maximum value that you're aiming for. So normally this value is set to three, I think out of the box. And basically Turbo Smart recommends that you set this five PSI below your target boost pressure. In these cars, that's yeah, probably gonna be around seven to eight PSI for most people. Um, it will vary from car to car because of elevation, but you can start with that about three out of the box and you can turn it up a little bit. Uh, we found on this car that about four and a half PSI is about the time that we want to start ramping it up a little bit more quickly so that way the boost comes on nice and perky. SN1 or sensitivity is how the boost reacts as it maintains this kind of duty cycle. So the duty cycle it is aiming for a pretty specific value so it's trying to maintain that boost level as evenly as possible but you may have some fluctuations in your boost pressure in your logs that you're seeing. And if you're starting to see like really, really quick uh, oscillations of your boost pressure, you may need to turn that sensitivity down. Now, if you see where your uh, boost pressure is oscillating, but it's oscillating really slowly, you may need to turn it a little bit up. So that way you can maintain as even as like a plateau kind of a boost curve as possible at maximum boost pressure. The stock value for the SN1 or sensitivity setting on this TurboSmart unit is 20. We found that this particular car is pretty happy about 26, but yours will likely be a little bit different because this will vary from car to car. Remember, we are only talking about seven to eight PSI for most of these stage one turbo kits. So this value isn't a terribly important thing. A lot of people leave it right at 20 and it's a fine way to drive the car. It's not really gonna affect your drivability all that much. It's a very fine adjustment kind of setting. Thanks for following along with our setup guide for the TurboSmart eBoost Street Boost Controller System. If you have any questions that weren't covered in this video, please reach out. You can give us a call or send us an email. You can check the description down below for how to get a hold of us. And of course, this is available on our website at flymiata.com. Again, link below in the description. Otherwise, thanks again. We sure appreciate your attention. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff, and we will see you in the next one.